Hey, so I finally got my paint brochure journal all completed and bound. So I'm ready to do a show and tell of it. And um, I'm not, you know, this isn't anything that is, you know, out of the stratosphere art wise. But um, what happened is whenever I got new stamps or stencils, um, these paint brochures are kind of what I played around in just to uh, get a feel for the stamp or the stencil that I would bought. Um, it could also be a medium that I was trying, whatever. Just kind of an experimentation journal. So if you keep watching, you'll see how this came together. And um, I'm not going to get too much into that because, like I said, you can see that later. Um, otherwise, this would be just a super long video. I'm going to do a real quick uh, flip through, too, because, like I said, it's, this is going to be a long video on its own. So um, I will share that on the last segment... <laughs> or the couple of last segments. I said I was going to use a Coptic stitch for binding my journal, and I did not do that. I wound up using the Sewn Over Tapes Exposed Spine Binding, and it would have been so much nicer had I not had to reinforce each of my folds with a, a linen hinging tape. Um, and if you keep watching, you'll see why I had to do that. That's toward the end of the video. But anyway, it would have been so much nicer had my all the painty pages been exposed here in the spine. Um, I wish it would have it would have looked more like this right here, where this is exposed. I love that look, and uh, I didn't get that here because of something that happened when I started binding the pages. So, um, but anyway, so I did use that binding method. And I found that, I already knew about the binding method anyway, but I did um, get this from my book, Creative Wildfire by L.K. Ludwig. And again, I'll discuss this a little bit later, but this was the uh, method that I used was on page 17 of that book. So, um, and then I, I talk about where I got my journal covers as well. So, like I said, just keep watching. This is just gonna be my quick flip, flip through. And, um, as you can see, this is, uh, the, uh, journal page, or I don't know what you call it, I keep saying page, um, but the spread that I last did, I did a video on, I decided to, uh, that was going to be my inside front cover, so I used that there, um, this was a Donna Downey stamp that I had bought, so I wanted to use it on a page. Oh, and I did, on all of these paint brochures, I did take it to my sewing machine, and I sewed around every single um, edge. Um, you'll see it when I fold this thing out in just a second. But here's this. And I'd gotten the uh, brick stencil from Crafter's Workshop and used that there. Um, there's some other stuff in here. Like I said, everything was something I wanted to try out. So I was doing a journal page. This was that, um, Sun, a big 12 by 12 crafters workshop template or that one or the Heidi, Heidi, uh, swap one. I can't remember. Uh, this was a Lost Coast design stamps that I wanted to try. So like I said, just a lot of experimentation in this uh, journal. So these are the quad fold uh, paint brochures that you get from Ho Lowe's or Home Depot. So they, so it does like this, it's, you know, just one brochure is one signature in here. Um, and then it folds out to do a really big spread. This is my Robin Marie Smith inspired um, spread here. So And you can see here where I have stitching all at the top, going all the way around. I mean, it's everywhere. So I did it all around the perimeter of these, um, you know, once it's opened up. This again was a uh, new crafter, Rebecca Meyer, uh, big 12 by 12 Rebecca Meyer crafters workshop stencil that I had got in the background here. Um, was dying to try it, so I used my spray paints and and did some stuff there. And then I also had the Tam Laporte, um, I think it's Tam Laporte from Artist Seller, her word stencils. I got the full set of four, so I did that. I could have done some pin work on here to kind of make that stand out a little bit more because it is kind of buried in the background, but... I didn't. Uh, another Lost Coast design stamp 
that I just stamped onto foreign text book page and just adhered down here because again I just wanted to use that stamp. I really like that stamp from Lost Coast Design. And I did do some personal journaling throughout this, so there is some of that in here as well. Um, I did another house in here too. There's some repeating uh, patterns throughout this book. Yeah. Okay. Uh, I just got the, uh, yeah, Prima stamp right there. was trying that. This is another word. Stencil stamp. I can't, I mean stencil from... Uh, Gosh, I just sound like a moron when I shoot these videos. Um, I can't remember if this is a Carolyn Doobie or... Yeah, I don't know. I think it's a Carolyn Doobie uh, stencil that I got, so I used that there. Uh, some of the Natalie Cowbot, Batch, Cowbot, Cowbatch stamps in the background. Um, Tim Holtz. I think I just gotten that Borders stamp set of his, so... Like I said, just a lot of stuff I was trying out here. Jenny Cagle had done a um, canvas on her uh, blog. Um, and also, to, she posted here to um, YouTube. And uh, so I did a journal page based off of uh, her canvas that she had done. I was totally inspired to go do this one from that. Um, this has a lot of napkin collage back behind it. Stenciling. Texture paste. Um, dimensional writers right here. Just a lot of stuff. Um, this was a Tangy Baxter from Here Up is a Tangy Baxter printable from one of her kits that I got. And then I just continued on and just drew this little skirt in for her and did some uh, journaling in here. This is again that Tam Laporte <laughs> stencil right there. I use that a lot. I really like those now. Um, these two pages right here, this was kind of a flub up because I was practicing with my melt pot and beeswax. I was doing a beeswax collage on a canvas. Didn't turn out very well for me. So, um, But I had some extra wax left over, so I thought I would try to do it in a journal page, and it did not turn out very well, so I had to cover it up and do a lot of, uh, uh, you know, just trying to make something out of nothing from that. So you can kind of see, I don't think you can tell on the, the video here, but there's beeswax all in here so I did like the texture that 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 gave so and then here's a couple more stencils that I had got gosh am I even in frame here I'm all over the place here's another couple of uh you know stencils just playing around with backgrounds actually on this one um this was just background painting. That's pretty much all I did. And this one was crumpled tissue um, that I had just stuck down with matte medium just to get texture. And uh, then I rubbed a pastel block over the top of it. And I did not like the way that turned out. I was disappointed with uh, <laughs> the way that that, that... So again, that just shows you, you know, when you do experimentation what happens, but I decided not to cover it up. Um, here's another, br the brick stencil that I'd used earlier. I used that again. I'd just gotten the Tim Holtz um, layered B, so I wanted to use that. Um, I shouldn't have used dark on dark. I mean, you know, you can see a lot of mistakes you make when you go back and revisit your pages, so. Um, but at the time, I knew it was a, a mistake, but I just said I didn't care. I was just wanting to use it. I just wanted to see what it looked like. Um, and this was an image transfer uh, from a Juxtapose magazine image, and just doing a little bit of did a bunch of doodling all around it and some paintings so um, this one I've showed I believe I've shown this one these are all um, Donna Downey foam stamps 
and I had wanted to just use those on this entire layout here so a lot of stamping on this kind of all Donna Downey foam stamps or unity cling rubber stamps I had done a process video on this one um, again, this was another Unity Donna Downey stamp that I had um, just bought months ago, so I was using it on this page. Like I did this in June, back on June 19th is when I had done this page, and I'd still I'd had this stamp for months before I finally used it. So, trying to use stamps more in my um, journaling now. So. And this was the Prima, the big 12x12 that has all the window scenes in it. And um, I wanted to try that. Again, that was just something that <laughs> was not the way I thought it was going to be. So I was like, ah. Oh. I get so excited about getting certain products. And then when I get it and try them out, I'm like, mm, yeah, not as exciting as I thought it was going to be. Here I was just trying to use up some stickers. And rub-ons because there's rub-ons all over this trying to use up what I got oh, another Robin Marie Smith I had taken her online class earlier this year so <laughs> I have two spreads in this art journal just from her online class that I took I love her work this was a mask that I cut out of my silhouette and I set it down here and then just started working on my background. Removed the mask and all that was left was the gesso. Used a script stamp in the center of it. Got some personal journaling in here. Uh, this was my Lynn Perella stamp. I love Lynn Perilla stamps, so I had to throw one of those in here. Yeah. Uh, here's that other house I was talking about. I just kind of did like a little whimsical house because I was just trying to use up, again, just some of my stash here. So there's like a little tree sticker I wanted to stick on here. Lost Coast Designs again. Another one of their stamps. This is all Diane Reevely's stamps right there. Then you open it up and here's where all the... This is my homage to Lynn Perella. All her stamps were put onto, stamped onto white cardstock and I incorporated those into all these pages here. And then here is the back side. So, whoops, can you even see? There we go. So again, just a lot of stamping on this. Um, a lot of stamping and then, I don't think I did a process video on this, but this little image was a Susie Blue stamp from Unity. And I stamped them onto white cardstock and then used different kind of markers to color in and I'm not a marker color by any means so which is why these images are not colored in I just prefer the black and white because I am not a color -er. color -er? is that a word so yeah if you're interested in how this whole thing just came together then keep watching and you'll see the um process of me putting it together but I just thought I would do the uh, journal share at the beginning of the video for those of you who are you know just you know not interested in, in anything else but just seeing it so I really like this journal um, I didn't decorate it because I'm getting to the point now where I'm having to stack my journals so I can't have anything bulky on here at all because it's just you know going in a bookcase and getting you know stacked on top of each other so okay all right you guys thanks for watching keep watching if you want to know how it came together i've mentioned this a time or two before but i love bookmaking i don't know what it is i think just the the process of 
putting a book together, there's just something about it that appeals to me. And I don't know why. I'm just totally addicted to it. So anyway, I'm starting a new project. One of many. And um, I, of course, I took it from one of my books, of course, because I get a lot of inspiration from the ton of books that I, I buy from Amazon. But Creative Wildfire by L.K. Ludwig. Um, and she actually has a video here on YouTube as well about doing this method right here. Oh my gosh. Right here. Look at that book. I love, I love this journal. I love this art journal right here. Love it, love it, love it. Um, here it is all folded out. Don't know if you can see that very well. I've got new lights, so I'm hoping those are going to help. But anyway, um, yeah, so I, I love this art journal. And um, so I wanted to recreate one. Of course, this has been on my bucket list for months and months and months, months, and I'm finally getting around to doing it. And um, also, she references back to page 20 for the binding method, which is called Sewn Over Cords Binding with the Seed Pearl Stitch. And there's a whole explanation. I haven't really looked at this. I'm not going to look at this until I'm ready to bind it. <laughs> so... I don't know what how hard that's going to be, but I'm starting right here. So, the process of this, and she explains this on her video, which she said she would do multiple videos to go through the process of making this, but she never did. <laughs> so, um, the, the directions are kind of vague on putting this together, but I love this book. Don't get me wrong. I, I own several of her books. Um... I probably have four of her books because I just, I love, 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 love her books. So, anyway, um, I went to, and I don't think I have one that hasn't been gessoed already, but, um, oh, here's one, that I went to Lowe's and I was there getting, of course, more storage solutions for my craft room in here. And, um... So I picked up a bunch of these paint um, quad fold brochures. Yeah, and we've all seen these. There's people who do these and make journals out of them. I'm using L.K. Ludwig's um, method, though. So anyway, these quad fold, and there's a couple of sizes that I got that I picked up. This size, as well as the smaller size. And I've already gessoed all these. And this is the Lowe's brand Valspar um, brochures. They're not very um, thick cardstock like the Sherwin Williams are, but that's at Home Depot and that's a, a, an exit at North. And I wasn't going to go up there, so this is what I got. But just know that the Sherwin Williams quad fold um, paint brochures are much better stock material. Anyway, um, but anyway, so I got these Valspar ones, and I am going through the process now. I'm starting this process by gessoing all the brochures that I'm going to use in the signatures of my books. Because I'm going to do, I think, three of these. I'm going to do one in this size, one in this smaller size, and then I have one, hold on. It was in the other room. And then I have this one that is just a regular, um, you know, this kind of a brochure. It's stapled down the middle. And I'm not sure what I'm going to do with this yet, but I decided to go ahead and do something with this as well. I've already started just sewing these pages as well, as you can see. And I don't care. It doesn't have to be completely white. Um, I could have even left some of the color. That's the great thing about paint brochures is that it, it's already got the, uh, you know, colors, different colors on there that you can incorporate into your page. But it is shiny material. So that's why I'm just sewing everything. So when I put my paint on it, I don't want it to wick up on me. So 
Um, but anyway, but I do suggest that when you do this, like I didn't do it on my first couple of pages and I should have, is lay ta masking tape right down the, the seam in the middle there because any wet media is going to go to the back, which has already happened with my gesso here. So I'm going to go back and put masking tape down the center of all these, finish gessoing all this, and um, then I'll be back. So I went to the Goodwill bookstore and I found, I went in with my uh, sample from each size of the journal that I'm wanting to do. And I went in specifically to look for covers that would be as close as possible to this. Now I was really hoping to find something that was exactly, you know, this size, but now I've got this like three quarters of an inch overlap here. But I was having a really hard time and finding something. So I wound up getting as close as I could anyway to the exact size. And <clears throat> so what I'm gonna do is I am going to, so this is what I did, so on both of these. Okay, so now what I'm doing is I'm, and this is going to be for the covers of my journal. So I've already taken a heavy duty box cutter and I have already cut off the back cover of this book. So this is going to be the back cover of this book, which is a pretty good match. There's a little overlap, but um, I'll either yeah, I was going to say I'll probably cut over, you know, cut. I kind of wanted this to be exact. Like a lot of journals that you see, you know, there's like a quarter inch around, um, you know, the actual signature of the book. But on my journal, I don't want that. Um, the way it looks in the book that I'm reading is that you need to have your cover be the exact same size as your signature. So um, that's why I tried to you know, find something that was close anyway. So, um, I've already taken off the back cover and I know I sound like an idiot. Dur, 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 dur. Do you know what you're talking about, Kim? Sometimes I don't. <laughs> Sometimes I'm just talking out my ass. No, I really do. I'm, I know what I'm, my problem is I have a hard time verbalizing what uh, I'm trying to say. So, okay. So now I am just going to go in with this heavy duty box cutter right on the line of that spine and take off the front cover as well. So now I have got my front and back cover for the signatures of my book right here and <clears throat> like I said I don't know how I'm gonna bind it yet I want to do it like I showed in the earlier segment um, just like uh, LK Ludwig did with that binding but I'm not sure it depends on how difficult that is so anyway um, so this is gonna be like you open it here's the first page of the journal you open it then there's a flip out. Oh, wow, you can't even see. Ah, here we go. Yeah, let me move over so you can see. Okay, so then, all right, let's do that again. Then you open it, first page, you open it, and then you have the flip out here, and you have the flip out here. Then there's the back. So then you're going to pick up again with the next one. And I use black gesso on this. I wanted to mix up the color. So I figure I'll play, play with metallics on this. Metallic paints, watercolors, whatever. <clears throat> so anyway, and just keep on going until I get all the signatures in here and um, bind it. Um, but now I've got to figure out, I think I'm going to decorate my covers before... I put the book together and I think I'm going to do the same thing with my journal pages. I think I'm gonna that's what I'm gonna do. I've just sat here and made up my mind. I am going to not bind this until the very end. So I am going to decorate all the signatures 
of my each of my books. Then I'll decorate the covers and then I'm going to bind it. Okay. Um, and I'm not going, yeah, I actually am going to throw this away. I was going to say, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to hold on to the, the inside of this, but this is like really shiny paper and I don't like collaging with really shiny paper. So I'll trash that. But then I found this other book to match the pages, the smaller one. Close enough anyway. This is a really old scuba diving book. And I like this. It's got like a canvas cover. So <clears throat> I'll just sew over that. Decorate it the way I like. Um, but yeah, again, see, these are shiny pages. I was thinking these were matte pages and I could just, you know, I'd like to use this as collage material, but who knows? I don't know. I may still keep some of these. There's some interesting pictures in here, but yeah, I don't like collaging with the shiny stuff. Okay, so anyway, this is where I'm at right now, and I'll be back when everything is done, and we'll do a flip through. Bye. I did a lot of jelly plate printing on these brochures, and I did some stamp clean off too. That was kind of like a practice thing that I was doing. So I used this to do a clean off and now I'm going to come in on this side and I am going to do a um, lot of collaging with uh, tissue paper, stamp tissue paper, and paper napkins as well. So I just kind of wanted to go over a little bit of the process of what I'm doing here um, before I put this together. And um, do my final reveal on the journal and how I bind it and everything. So I'll be back with all that. Okay, I went a totally different route for my covers than what I, my original intention was. So these were originally um, jelly plate prints and this one I've even um, covered up with more gesso um, because I thought I was going to be doing something totally different before this is like the third time I've I've changed my mind about what I want to do for my covers of this journal. So <clears throat> what I did is I took some oatmeal chalk paint and just went around the outer edges and then I took the wax and went around that just to give it an aged look and it's this stuff right here which is the folk art home decor wax. Yeah you use it for furniture but I decided to use it on my <laughs> book cover too so uh that's what that is because what i'm doing is i have these free printables that i got from astrid mclean's web website i don't know if i'm pronouncing her last name correctly but it's astrid's artistic efforts um if you want to check out her blog because um, i'm a huge fan of her work um, and she had these free printables quite a while back and I have um, printed those out to cardstock there's just white cardstock and I have printed those out to use as my journal covers and yeah it doesn't really go with my pages that are on the inside because um, you know these are what those kind of look like so doesn't match at all but I loved the uh, covers so that's the route I'm going with this okay so what I'm going to do is take some PVA adhesive and I am going to adhere it to my book covers with that and then I am going to use the Coptic stitch to bind my um, to bind my signatures into this book and uh, because I want the exposed spine to show and uh, the stitching I mean to show on my spine so that's the stitch I'm going to use to bind it and I'm not going to show the process video for that because there's tons of videos here on YouTube for showing Coptic stitch um, and not only that, but it takes me way too long to do it. It takes forever for me to bind a book when I'm doing the Coptic stitch. So, um, I will, this is going to be the last video, um, of showing how this came together. I'm just going to do the reveal video at the very beginning doing my, um, journal flip. So I will see you later. All right. I had to come back 
even though I said I wasn't going to on the last segment, I had to come back because I started um, using my template to punch my holes. Oops, this way. I started using my template to punch my holes into my signatures, and I was using my awl and punching my holes through, and all of a sudden my page started to come apart. The center fold started to just completely come apart. So what I did not take into consideration when using um, paint brochures is that you know it's not made for accepting this kind of wet media. So because I used a lot of wet media on this, the structural integrity of the fold here seriously deteriorate, deteriorated so um <laughs> yeah it's 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 like um so brittle now and like i said i started punching the hole and the whole seam just started to come apart so what i wound up doing is i had some of this linen hinging tape it's self-adhesive i got from amazon it's by Lanico and I and this is wide too this is um, one and a quarter inch so what I did is I measured top to bottom cut out a strip that long and then I just cut that strip right in half so that I have so it was you know I used my paper cutter so I had a straight straight line but you know this was how wide it was cut it right down the middle so that I had two um, because I didn't want a one inch wide hinging tape here. I wanted, um, you know, because then that's going to start covering up my art that I did. And then, um, and then this hinging tape was not sticking to my page either, to my pages. So I was like, oh my god, it's just one problem after another. So I took some of the fabric Fabri-Tac adhesive and I ran a line all the way down and then put the linen, the hinging tape on top. I did that on both sides, front and back here. So that now I'm gonna let this dry and then when I come back, I'll use my template, put it over like this, stick my holes in and now I'll have this reinforced with the linen hinging tape so that when I start to thread my signatures, it won't tear apart on me. So I had to come back and share that because if you're going to use paint journals like I did, or paint journals, paint brochures like I did for my journal, um, yeah, you're gonna need to take that into consideration. So I did not because what I should have done prior to doing this is I should have put the reinforcement where I knew the spine was gonna be and where I was gonna be punching holes. I should have put that on first and then started doing all my painting because now like these open spreads that I had continuing onto two pages it's going to be broken up now I mean it was going to be broken up anyway with the uh, stitch the stitching the thread stitching in here but now this is really noticeable because um, of the linen hinging tape so um, I just wanted to come back and share that with you so that you don't make my mistake if you decide to put one of these together. So put the uh, reinforce it somehow, um, whether you use linen hinging tape or something else and sticky back canvas, whatever, um, to reinforce it. And then you can put your gesso over it and start painting. Okay, I'll see you later.